In this tutorial, we'll cover how to develop this app in Webflow. This is an intermediate level Webflow tutorial. We'll not cover how to style things in the designer or how to use the backend CMS, but this is basically covering how to develop the app-like functionality. So let's dive in. The first thing we're gonna need is a basic container. Since this will be a mobile app, we'll give the container sort of a class and a max width. So this width is going to be 500 pixels and a max width of 100%, height of 100 VH, and we'll center it by margin auto, left and right, and just kind of give it a background color. So this is our container for our app. We'll drag in a tabs component, and this tabs component is going to be the functionality of the whole app. So we'll take the tabs menu and basically make it our navigation. So we'll make it see nav, uh, give it a position of fix towards the bottom, and again, we're going to have to give it the width uh, to make it respect our container. Um, then we can start styling all our different links. So each of these links is going to need to have the same class. And then we can start plugging in some of our different information and giving it the proper styling. Um, we'll set like a clear or a transparent color to each individual link, um, since these won't necessarily need to have a color, and kind of zero out the uh, padding that's automatically given. I'm just adding some padding to the overall container. Uh, we'll do 30 pixels. So this div here is going to hold all our icons and we're going to have uh, two icons for each link, um, an inactive and an active state icon. So this div is going to be pretty important to be our icon container. Um, we'll go ahead and just drag in our different icons and start styling them. So our inactive uh, icon and our active icon are going to need to have two separate classes that way we can animate them so I'm just duplicating that class name and now we have two side by side and now we'll just kind of populate all the other nav links with the correct icons um, and the correct classes I'm setting the display to none on the active state for now and um, just kind of changing out our text to make sure all the content is correct within these different links So I'm using Flexbox to distribute all these links across the entire container. And I'll change out our icons, make sure they're correct. And um, so we need to create like a notifications dot on the messages. So I'll just drag in a div and round off the radius completely to make it a circle um, and just give it a set width and height. And then this div is going to need to be positioned absolutely to the corner of our icon container. So the icon container needs to be set to relative to hold that, that sort of notification style. Um, and that's looking pretty good. We'll set it to inline um, all our message icons and just kind of give it some margin off the side. Then I'll give the entire um, nav like a border and a background color and give it a higher Z index so it will fall on top of all our other content. And that's basically the styling of that section. Now we just need to animate it. So I'm creating an interaction here and we're going to apply it to the class so it affects all our nav links. And we'll say whenever a tab is in view, we want to set the inactive icon to display none and the active icon to display a uh, block. And then we'll create a separate animation for whenever it's out of view. We'll set the, um, do just the opposite. So the inactive icon is gonna be display none. And we test that out and it's working perfectly. Um, I'll just kind of adjust the margin and uh, making sure there's a decent amount of space between all the icons. Um, those are looking pretty good. So whenever the, um, the message icon is in view, we'll want that little notifications dot to go away. So we'll reopen our in view animation and set only children with that dot class to the display none when it's, and then back when it's out of view, it'll be display block again. So you see it's disappearing whenever we click or select on it, which is perfect for this. Um, one last thing, I'm just kind of tweaking the font color so that the current state will have a darker um, color and then the inactives will be light gray. Um, so now we'll create a class for like our tab content section and we'll make sure that each of these have the same classified. 
and here we're going to define a minimum height of 100 VH and just give it that 30 pixels padding and then some padding off the top and then definitely a lot of padding on the bottom so our content doesn't ever fall underneath our nav. And we can drag in like a heading and we'll create a style um, for this heading that we're going to reuse for all of them. And it can just have the heading of our section. So this is going to house a bunch of different events and we need to sort by the day. So I'm, I dragged in another tab component and I'm just labeling each of these tabs by day one, day two, day three, and day four, and just kind of styling them. So we'll be able to pull in basically a CMS, um, a list of CMS items in here. And I'm just gonna, again, set a flex box to distribute these links. So there's even space in between all of them. Um, and then we can drag in our CMS uh, collection list. And we're gonna link this to um, something I already have set up, which is the events. I have a bunch of event data in here. And I'll drag in a div block into each item that's going to be kind of the card. And this can have like a background image, which we'll get from a field that I already populated. And we can style it however it needs to be styled with a border radius. I'm definitely going to set the overflow to none. So when we drag in other content, if it goes outside of the edge of these cards, um, it's going to be cropped within the card. So we're just kind of creating an overlay here. This is just like a gradient overlay. And then we'll create another div for our content where we're going to place all the information about each event. Just kind of adding some padding and styling these, adding in our different content and the styling it. We'll get the text from the event name and then we'll drag in another event, uh, another text for event time and link that to the start time. So I created a field for the start and the end time of each event. So I'm going to make two of these and link the second one to the end time and then we'll make another one that's just a dash and uh, this won't be linked to the actual collection. So you see here, whenever there is no end time, the dash is still showing up. So we need to set a conditional visibility to that dash that hides it when an end time is not set. Um, and then we'll drag in one more kind of div in here. And that is gonna be, we're gonna need one more div and that's gonna be for our icons. So we'll have an icon for each event showing what type of event this is. So I'll create a container for our icons then I'll just drag in an icon and give it a certain style. And we're gonna have six of these icons, one for each type of event. And we'll need to set these again with like a conditional visibility, um, just so that way the correct icon is only being shown for the correct event. So we'll duplicate those and make six and select all our different icons. And then we'll say uh, under event type, these are all fields I created ahead of time in the CMS. So like if event type equals free time, then show the free time icon. Um, and I set that conditional visibility for each icon. Um, I'm sorting this, the order of these events from oldest to newest. So the events that are happening earlier in the day are gonna show up first. And then I'm tagging these events to only show events that are on the first day, day one events. So now we just need to create our little pop-up. So anytime we click on a card, a pop-up is going to appear. We'll set this to position fixed. And again, we'll give it a width of 500 pixels, a max width of 100%, and give it a background color, and also a high enough Z index so that way it covers our cards, but it doesn't cover our nav. Um, and then we'll create another div inside this pop-up for our photo. And we'll give that a height of 50 viewport height and get the background image from our collection field again. And then one more div inside here for our content. And for this one, we're gonna um, actually position it, give it a height of 60 VH and position it from the bottom. So it overlaps our image. We can give it a background color and round off the two top corners. So we get this kind of overlapping app feel. Um, then we'll add some padding inside this container that's looking pretty good. Now we just need to add in our content again. So this is going to be a back arrow. Um, and then we can drag in our headings and relink that to the event title. And this is just going to take some more styling the same way we set up the rest 
Um, this will be for event time. So again, we need to link it to the start and end time and set our conditional visibility. Um, and then we'll have the icons again. So we only want the icon to show up that's specific to this event, but we have to create all the possible variations and um, do the conditional visibility again. So now it's only showing the free time icon and we'll link that to the event type so it's showing the free time text next to that icon. Um, and then we can start dragging in like a container for two buttons and um, we'll make that container uh, have the links inside. We can style these however we'd like. I'm just giving these a border and maybe a font color and title these. And uh, these links will actually pull from the CMS as well. So once we adjust these, I'll duplicate this and make a combo class for the second one. That way I can alter the style slightly, but it's still going to respect um, the, the main styling. And the overall uh, container for these links, I just added a flex box that distributes it. So there's even space between them. And then I'm setting conditional visibility. So if there's no website link, that, uh, that link will not show up. And if there's no menu link, that link won't show up either. So these are all based on the information in the collections fields. And now we just need like a space for an address. So I'll style this and um, we're gonna pull this address. It's gonna be inside a link block. That way we can click on the address and it'll take you to Google Maps. We want to pull the address name um, from the CMS. This one just didn't have an address set, so that's why it disappeared. But we'll definitely want to pull that name and style that correctly and pull it from the CMS. Um, and then we'll link the URL to get it from Google Maps and make sure it opens in a new tab. And the entire link block will set conditional visibility on to where it's not going to show up if there's no address set up for the event. Um, last thing I'm going to do is just flexbox to arrange these items to the center and you'll see I need to put all those times inside a div that way they're aligned properly. Then they're aligned to the center which is perfect. Um, so the next thing we need to do is we can set our entire pop-up to display none so that it's hidden and we'll click on the collection item and start an animation. Um, so whenever the pop-up opens, on first click, we'll set the pop-up to display block. And on second click, um, we'll create one called pop-up closes and set it back to the pop-up to display hidden. Um, so that's looking pretty good. It will just give our uh, CMS item a class so we can apply this animation to the whole class. And now if we click on any of these, it's working perfectly. The pop-up shows up. You could animate these further if you want it to fade in first or um, slide up or anything like that. I'm going to copy these collection items and paste them inside each day's tab and then set the um, filter to show day two on day two's tab, day three on day three's tab, and etc. Um, and that's really everything for the first tab so we can d dive right into the second one. And again, we'll have a heading for this tab. This one's pretty straightforward. I have this uh, weather uh, widget and these cards here. So I'm using this website. Um, this And there's a ton of free ones, but this weatherwidget.io will let you embed kind of live weather feed into your site. And you can customize it with the correct fonts. Um, if you have certain color themes that you're using in your site, which for this one we are, we're using this light gray that we'll want all the text to have really, and then this red color. And we'll just make all of the icons red and copy that code and drag in an embed widget and just paste our code in. And then we just need to build out the cards part for this one. So this is pretty straightforward. We're going to set up our class for the first card, make sure it has padding and it's styled correctly, um, make sure the content is correct on it and that font color is correct. And we'll just kind of style this to look like this one. Then I'll have a link block again for this, uh, for this link. That way it can open up in Google Maps like the other link. 
and we want to style that link box so it has a color um, and everything's looking right inside there and we'll also drag in an icon um, so this is just like to indicate that the URL is clickable we'll just style that correctly make sure that that is set in line so it stacks next to the URL and we just have like a Wi-Fi password a password for the house and also a link um, to get to the house through uber so i'm creating like a div to hold all this information and then i'm creating another div inside that with um the specific information for the wi-fi password and its icon and make sure that that div is set to inline basically that way it's not going to span the width of the container and then i can duplicate it and just populate the next one with the correct information and set the overarching div to flexbox distribute that way it's spaced evenly then i can add in the link and this link will just style it like to be a smaller smaller one and uh, have the correct information and then we'll also need to set the flex box to align the content to the center so everything's perfectly aligned to center and it has the correct margin on the top and then once we duplicate this card all we'll need to do is create a combo class so we can change the color uh, the background color, the text color, and then we'll create a combo class for the button as well and change that out, and as well as for the link block. And then it's just a matter really of replacing these icons with the white icons so that it looks correct. Um, and that's really everything for this section. If we publish and check it out, you see we have the live weather widget and the cards all look correct. So we'll move on to this next tab. This is for groups. And for this, we're going to want to use a slider component. That way we can drag and uh, these uh, groups will slide from the side. Um, we're going to want this slider to really just span the whole width of the container. And we're going to use our own um, kind of just a combo class. That way we can add uh, padding into the title, but remove it from the body. And then for this element, we're going to use a custom one. So we'll just set it to display none for the arrows and for the navigation. Um, and we'll set the background of the slide to transparent. And uh, now we can just create a heading for this particular group and make sure that our slide has like the correct um, styling to it and the correct padding of 30 pixels. So everything aligns perfectly. And then we'll drag in a collection list because our team members are saved in the team member collection, which is perfect. And we can kind of just drag in a div that we'll use for their profile picture. And for this, we'll want to get the image from the profile picture field. And that's just going to populate all our team members. It's getting cut off here. So we need to make sure the slide and the slider are both set to height of auto. That way the content doesn't get cut off. And that's looking pretty good. I'm just restyling it and we can add the names of each team member which we'll also get from the collection and we'll also add their position so um, this is going to be like whether or not they're a team leader or just a group member um, we want to make sure all this content is inside like basically just inside another container that way we can use flexbox to distribute it from top to bottom and um, that's looking pretty good. So we will also need to drag in a link block and we'll use this link block to basically give people the option to either call or email the team member. So we'll style it um, with a certain width and height and we'll add an image inside and give that a width of like 50% of the container and use Flexbox on the container to make the image center. And then we can sort of style it um, we can duplicate and create a combo class on the second one to make it look sort of different. And we're using Flexbox on the overall container to uh, line these two to the side. Um, and we'll replace the images with the correct, with the correct links. Um, and then we just want to link these so that it gets it from the email of this field. And we'll make sure to use filtering so it's only showing group one under this information. And we'll sort it in the correct order so the leaders on the top. So now we just need to create the navigation towards the bottom. So for this, we'll give it a width of like 80%, a height of three pixels, and a background color of gray. 
So basically we're gonna have a red bar inside there that can slide um, to any section and then we'll have these white columns that kind of divide it. So each white column we're gonna give a height of 100% of the container and it can have this sort of width. Um, definitely wanna have that. And basically we're gonna style these so that they have a background color and we're gonna make quite a few of them honestly. And um, we're gonna use Flexbox on the overall container to distribute them across. And that's looking pretty good. Um, that way we have five sections and we'll make our red line and we'll position that absolutely to the side of the container. So we need to make sure the container itself is set to relative so the line stays inside. And we'll give the white columns like a higher Z index than the line so that way the red line goes underneath the white columns. And um, that's looking pretty good. And we can just kind of position these so now anytime we go to a slide and that slide is active we're going to want the red line to move to that part of the slide um, so we'll hurry up and just create for demonstration purposes the different the five different slides and give them the right title and um, make sure that it has all the right content inside so like this collection wrapper we can paste inside each slide and then we can just set the settings on that wrapper to only show group two on the group two slide, group three on the group three slide, and so on and so forth, all the way down. The last thing we need to do really is set up our interaction. So we'll set up an interaction on slide change, and this one's only gonna affect the particular element. So slide one, um, because we need to create a specific animation so that whenever slide one is in view, this red line is going to be 8% or 10% from the left hand side. And then we'll create another specific animation on slide two. And again, this is affecting just the slide two element, not the slider class. And we're going to move the red line to be at a different percentage. Um, so that way it's in that spot. And this is going to happen whenever slide 2 is in view. We'll do the same thing for slide 3 and slide 4 and slide 5. So whenever a slider comes into view, it's going to move the red line to the particular point that we set up in our animation. And if we test this out, um, we can swipe through the various slides and we'll see that it's working correctly and everything is moving uh, correctly in the right spot. So that's just an easy way to set up like our own custom navigation if we don't like the way that the standard Webflow navigation looks. Um, we're gonna jump into this next section which is nearby. And in here we're gonna have a couple cards that are going to span the width of the container. So we need to use our same combo classes to knock out the padding on this container for this one. We'll get it from the um, nearby collection that I set up. And these are all going to be links, so we're definitely going to need to give them like a height, um, maybe give them a width of like a percentage base width, um, and then we'll use Flexbox to distribute them all side by side, but then we need to go back to each item and give it a, a minimum width, that way it will never get smaller. And then we'll just kind of drag in our link blocks um, and we'll make it fill the width and the height of that container. And for this, we'll again get a background image that's going to be, uh, we're going to get that from the collection. And then it's kind of going to be the same way we set up our events. So we'll drag in another div that spans the width and the height. And this will be for our gradient overlay, just so we can see the text on the inside a little bit better. And we'll use Flexbox to run, align the content towards the bottom. And we'll drag in like our headings. Um, make sure that it's the right color, make sure there's padding and things like that, and then um, get the text from that sp specific title. And uh, we'll drag in like an icon and style that as well. We're using Flexbox to distribute the icon to one side and the text to the other. And um, just kind of using padding to keep it all nice and uh, tucked together. And that's looking pretty good um, from that side. So we see whenever we scroll to the side, we have uh, no padding on that right side. So we definitely need to 
make sure that the collection item itself definitely has like uh, padding on the inside of it, like maybe um, 30, 30 pixels padding on the inside of this collection item. That way, um, when we scroll all the way to the side, you'll see that padding on the side as well. Um, and the padding on the right is just coming from the collection list. So we'll filter this again, so it's only showing those tagged with the eateries category. And we'll add sort of this title in to say that this is all places you can go to eat. And I basically set a um, max width on the collection or a max height on the collection wrapper. So that way it's kind of hiding the scroll bar. So the collection wrapper is set to overflow none. Um, the collection list is set to overflow scroll. So that's what's allowing it to scroll. Um, and then we're setting up our second one here for the activity section. This last one is for messages and basically this isn't like a real message component but it's basically all I need it for this app pretty much. So it's going to get all the messages from the collection that I set up specifically for messages. And there's going to be two options. First of all, our group was going on this retreat. So uh, I set it up to where they could basically send a message in a Slack channel and inside that Slack channel, it would add the messages to my message collection using Zapier. It would get their profile picture, their name, and their message. And then I also have basically a form field set up on here so that um, if anyone submits from the form on the site, it'll also put their message in the same collection, but it's gonna post them as an anonymous user. So I'm setting up all the fields right now, like for the person's name and for their message and styling it correctly and making sure it's getting all that content from the actual CMS. Um, for profile picture, since the only thing that Slack gives us is not an actual picture, but a link to their profile picture, we're gonna need to kind of add our own custom HTML and CSS to grab that profile picture. So we'll create a class using the person's name field since each person should have a unique first name inside the Slack channel. And we're gonna use that class to add their profile picture. And we're gonna grab that profile picture from the URL that Slack will provide. We'll make sure that this is all styled correctly. So these are all fields that I have set up inside the CMS. And uh, we'll make sure to give those profile pictures a set height and width so you can see them looking pretty good there um, and then we'll also need to set up a way for users to tell that there's a new message so I'll duplicate this entire collection wrapper and add a combo class for new messages and for new messages we'll want it to have like a drop shadow and a white background so this is how all our new messages are basically gonna look and then we need to filter this to only show maybe one item at a time so it's only going to show the first item and then the second one will filter it to show a hundred items but only start at the second item and then we can duplicate this entire class and uh, this entire section create a remove our combo class so there's two basically here there's the new message that is filled in the new message that isn't filled in the one that isn't filled in we're setting to display hidden at first and whenever we leave the messages tab, we're going to create an animation. This is basically just a hack to make it look like the message is red. So we're going to create an animation um, that makes the notifications dot have an opacity of zero. And it's going to make this filled message container have a display of hidden and the red message container have a display of block. So whenever we uh, go to a different tab and say we open up the app, the notifications dot is there, we click, the notifications dot disappears. When we come back, the message is unread. Um, and that looks pretty good. So basically we just have three collections in here. Um, one is for the red message number one, uh, the one that has not been read. One is for message number one that has been read, that looks a little different. 
And the third one is for all the other messages. Um, so now I'm just adding a form field in here and we'll kind of style the submit button to have a certain uh, font size of zero and a width and a height to make it more of a square and a radius. And then we'll just add a background image of this arrow, give it a set width. And then we can style this entire sort of uh, form box. We definitely want it to be position fixed from the bottom. Um, that way it's always in view. And we'll give it some margin. That way it sits kind of on top of our navigation. And we'll add some padding in here, 30 pixels again, so everything lines up. Just kind of style this um, message box how we want it to be. So we only really need this one field and the submit button, and I'm using Flexbox to put them side by side. Um, and then we'll definitely want to like increase some padding on the sides, make sure everything looks nice. Um, and I'm even going to add in like a drop shadow um, to the actual form block, um, just to style it a little bit more. Um, and drop the opacity maybe, and things like that. And that's pretty good um, and we can style like a successful state so we can um, make this look however we want when the message has been successfully received and we have to let people know here they're going to need to refresh the page to see the new message so i'm going to publish that and test it out so um, we have this field we can submit a message but nothing happens because we need to use Zapier to basically link this form to our actual collection. So I'm going to create a item here. Whenever a form is submitted in Webflow, we want Webflow to create a live item on the site. It's really important that the item is live. And we'll choose our correct site and we'll choose what collection we want it to put it in. In this case, it's messages. And it's going to get the um, content field from the title. And then we'll just hard code in a link to a profile picture and we'll set the name to anonymous. And then we just need to turn the zap on. So now if we refresh the page and test this out, we can send a message in here, post it, and then we'll refresh again, go back to messages. And there our message is proudly on the site. Um, that's really everything about the app. It's basically made with tab components, a lot of collection items, and a little bit of Zapier to connect things all together. Hope you've enjoyed.